It's nice too. It's a nice toggle action. I think so this is hiding content, showing content. A little bit of padding, but it doesn't feel too bad. This was nice. Not too shabby, I think. Hey everyone, Tucker here. Today I'm going to be going over the show and hide button functionality in the ClickFunnels editor. Show and hide buttons can be utilized as an advantage to minimize the initial cognitive load that a user normally experiences when they land on the website. Normally people are presented with lots of options and it's really hard to decide what you want to do. So having a toggle to minimize what they want to choose and then also cater to their experience, right? So you're creating a point of engagement where they can tailor their plans or pricing um, for whatever product that you're selling can be huge. This tutorial utilizes no CSS and no special abilities. It's literally just a button to show and hide. And then there's just a little bit of tweaking that you would do, like how you see on this page that you saw, um, where you're kind of rounding out some stuff, giving a little bit of box shadow, making it look a little bit pretty to make it feel like it's a toggle and not a button. So I'm just kind of going over how you would use this inside of your funnel. Um, as you can see, this is lead pages and it's, it's a little, uh, you guys can do this however you want. And I'm looking at bytes and lead pages for examples right now. Um, and I'm in the pricing page and you can see that the domains leadpages.com and my path is pricing. And when you, when I toggle this onto monthly and yearly, you see that my path is not really changing, which means that this is just one page where they hide and show content, which is literally what that show and hide button can do in your editor. Um, Byte, I believe is the same way. You have your domain and you have your pages and plans. And if you toggle, it's just showing and hiding. Um, so when you when a customer lands on your pricing page or your plan page, this is how you can show products instead of having it all in one page. Just have two products that's that's hidden and shown, and you can condense a lot of information. I just named my funnel show hide buttons and uh, I've just added an opt-in page in here. I'm just going to start with just a random template, which is fine. I'm going to delete probably most of this thing in here. Go edit page. So now we have a blank canvas. I'm just going to go over the show and hide button functionalities really quickly. So for one, where is the show and hide button? It's just a normal button. So I'm just going to go and add a full width section, add a new row. I'm going to do a double row column. Uh, and then I'm going to go and add a button, just, just a normal button inside of your form. I'm going to add that in. When you click on that, when you go into set actions, you see all your options. And at the very bottom, you should see a show and hide actions. And when you click on that, you get these two options to show these and hide these. And this is very important going forward. Number two. So how does a show and hide work with just one button? It doesn't, it actually works with four buttons. When you're seeing this page, there's actually four buttons that are in play in this area. There's also two sections that are in play in this page. When I'm clicking on the monthly, I'm hiding the active yearly. When I click on yearly, I'm hiding the active monthly. So let me try to simplify what that looks like. I have button A, button A, and let's call this the active. State. I also need a button B and this is a button B active state and I'm going to change the button B to be red. I also need an inactive state for these. So when that one side is active, the other side is inactive. So I'm just going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this inactive and I will take out the background and change the text color to dark. And I will do the same with this. No color and black. And I'm gonna place this on top. So you're kind of seeing behind the scenes of what's happening right here. When one side is active, you have the other side inactive, right? So when button A is active, button B is inactive. When button A is inactive, button B is active. And you're just configuring this in the back so that when one is clicked, one is hidden. When one is clicked, the other one's hidden. And this can get a little bit tedious. So the best way to go about this is just focus on the inactive state. Going back to this page, I'm going to go into the button A inactive. 
set actions. And uh, because I've already clicked on show action, show and hide actions, uh, it should already have these settings at the bottom. So when I click on A inactive, I want the active state to turn on. So I'm gonna say show button A active. So element, so you can see when I hover over these, the elements that and sections actually and rows um, get highlighted. And you just wanna click on the one that is correct. So this is hovering over element but but <laughs> and uh, it's on the button A active, click on that. And that's going to show when button A inactive is clicked. So this is the inactive state. When I click on that, it should become active. I also want to show that button B has become inactive from an active state. So which means I need to show the button B or the but inactive state. I need to also configure the hide. When I click on a inactive state, I need to hide what was already there. So I need to hide the actual button that I clicked on, which is this, the inactive button. I also need to hide the button B active state. So I'm gonna click on that. And now I need to go configure the B side. So button B, I'm doing the opposite of what was happening for the button A inactive. So I'm gonna show when, I, when someone clicks on an inactive state for button B, I'm going to be showing the button B active and the button A inactive. And I'm going to be hiding button A active and the button that you're configuring. And the last thing that you need to do is hide the one that you want to start on. So I'm going to go into settings of the button A inactive and I'm just going to hide it from both mobile and desktop. I'm also going to go to button B active and I'm going to go and hide that. So now you should have a page where there's only two buttons. I'm just going to go save this and see a preview of it. So my preview is a button A active and a button B inactive. And when I click on that, it should toggle. And look at that. And all that's doing is when I click on button B inactive, I'm just hiding this button and this button and showing these two. And this can get very complex if you wanted to. You can have three buttons, you can have four buttons that toggle, um, but every time you're adding a button, you're not just adding a button, you're adding two buttons because every button has to have a, an on and off state. So that's the basic foundation of how toggles work in the editor. Number three, how do you get this to look more like a toggle that you see on some of these sample pages? To get an actual toggle in, you might have to do a little bit of custom coding, but we don't need to make it that advanced. All you need to do is just add some borders, add some background, adjust the button stylings a little bit, and then just narrow the sections a little bit more. And we can explore this right here. So in your settings, let's bring the width down to 50%. And I'm gonna go into advanced. I'm gonna get a, a border, a full border that goes around the row. Let's say I want a border size of one pixel. So that's gonna adjust the thickness of the border that goes around. A solid style is fine. Let's say my color for the border is maybe a little lighter. I'm gonna change the corner radius so that it kind of matches a little bit of the button. And then edit the background and then uh, give it a little bit of gray. And that's just gonna give it a little bit more form to the whole toggle button element itself. I also wanna go and change the padding here to maybe like four pixels. It's gonna default to five, but four pixels and then left and right to zero. And make sure that when I go into these buttons, these buttons are full width or fill width. And so again, you go into settings on your buttons go into advanced and then go into your button width and then change that to fill width. And that's just going to fill the width of this row element or section a little bit better. Um, I do also like to tone down the inactive states a little bit. So I won't go all black here. I might go like a little bit of gray to give it that, um, the feeling that it is inactive. 
And then to get rid of the border around my inactive state, I just go into advanced, go down and then turn border to none. And this will look more like a link. And I've lost my text color for some reason. Make that inactive. So when I save this and preview, it should feel a little bit more like a toggle. And I need to go edit my button A inactive state. And to access those buttons, I would go into elements, manage, and then just look for the buttons that have a, a hide eye or hide from view. And I could just turn that on, but I just need to turn on this button. Background color, none. Text color, uh, I can't remember, I think it's this one. Advanced, border, none. And then go back into, oops, go back into hiding that. To get rid of more of this padding inside of this section, what you could do is go to columns and then specify, for example, this is in first column and try to take out the left and right padding a little bit. Um, you'll see that there still is a bit more padding uh, and that's kind of something that we might not be able to control, <clears throat> unfortunately. Um, and I'll do the same for this side, left and right, bring that back and put it to zero. Let's see what this looks like. There you go. I'm also just gonna go ahead and add a section in here just to get a better feel of what that toggle feels like on a page. So this doesn't have to be prices. It could be pricing. Like if you add an element, there is a, um, I do believe there is a pricing, pricing table. You could add three of these and then add an action button. Uh, but it could just be it could just be a toggle of information with one action button that that leads them to where they need to go. So let me just configure this. I'm going to go into elements and I'm going to show my inactive buttons. You can also name these so that they show up in your elements a little bit better by going into your settings, going into all the way to the bottom, and then finding get CSS info. Click on that and then just change this title to whatever that button name is. Okay, so I am always editing the inactive state. So when I click button A inactive, I want my action to show this first section, which is called row three column right now. And I want to hide also, come on. Row three columns, so this is the one below. And then I'm going to button B, inactive state. When I click on that, I want, because button B is gonna be active, I wanna show the row three, and I want to hide this top row. So you're basically doing the reverse of what you did for button A. I'm gonna hide button A, inactive, and then I'm also gonna hide this secondary section. Um, because I'm hiding the row, not the section, I'm just gonna bring this up so they're in the same section area in the green zone. And then I'm going to hide from here. So now I have a working toggle button or toggle element that is showing one thing when you click on button A and then another when you click on button B. Your link is staying the same, so if you wanna send this to someone, it's just you're sending them to a singular page where a customer can now interact and choose whatever they want to opt into or to buy um, in a much more friendly approach. And, and I think it's a little bit more fun as well than just showing two different things um, or all, all your products in one. The link for this will be down below in the descriptions if you want to see what I did here in the back um, and to, to get a feel of how I've set up all these buttons and, and all these sections. Uh, you can download it and take a look at some of the settings. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with in the future. If you guys have any questions, ask in the comments below and like and subscribe for more content. Thanks guys.